All right, so this is Silo 2024.3, and in this release we've added uh, several features, but the main thing is three new modifiers, the Boolean modifier, the chain replicate, and the um, path extrusion. So I've got open here an example of the Boolean modifiers. Uh, we've got this architectural shape, um, we've got the original shape, and we've also got an instance over, of it over here. And this shape is using uh, three instances of this source um, window shape to cut out different windows. So these are just instances that have been scaled uh, differently uh, from this shape over here. So we've got our, our shape and we've got two modifiers applied. One is the auto UVs, which keeps the UVs looking nice even if we uh, you know scale it and move it in different ways. Um, and the other one is the booleans. So obviously the booleans are cutting out the windows. Um, with all of these modifiers um, that we've added this time, it's using the concept of an, of an external source shape, which we didn't have with modifiers before. So that allows us to select uh, shapes in the scene. In this case, we're selecting these three um, instances here and using those as our source, as our target uh, for the Booleans. So we're doing a subtract here. Um, what would happen if we did a combine? Just get a little outcroppings there. Anyway, um, and then we can easily just modify the source shape and it modifies all the other shapes and it's all nicely non-destructive and easy to work with and um, and uh, change your mind in the future about what you want to do with these shapes. So that's the booleans. Let's take a quick look at the others. Um, let's look at path extrude here. Uh, this is a, a very simple example. Um, what we've got here, just a simple shape and a path we've drawn. Um, so this shape modifier has the path extrusion applied. We can cap the ends. Um, we can scale and rotate from start to finish. So you can see how it's scaling up as it goes. Um, or twist if you want it to twist. Um, again, it uses this, the selection mechanism to select a source path, which we've already selected here. Um, and again, the nice thing about this is that if we, uh, if we select the um, source path here, we can do things like scale the path and move the path around. Um, we can also subdivide the path and that will make a smoother uh, resulting shape. So again, it's just super useful to be able to do these things with the, uh, the non-destructive modifiers. And let's take a look at the third one, which is the um, chain replicate, which in this case, I have created a literal chain. This is also very useful for stairs and other repeating objects. And the way that this one works, um, you may have seen this feature before in non-modifier form, but uh, let me turn it off so you can see what we've got here. We've got here an original shape, um, which is these two links together. And the reason I did two links is so that it could be a, a, a nicely repeating shape rather than having to rotate uh, for each link. Um, and then we've got a second shape, which we're using as the target. So let me delete this and I'll add it again so you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to duplicate the shape. This is the way we recommend using this. You can actually use any target shape. Um, it just gets the transform from it, from it, but we recommend just duplicating your shape and using that as the target shape. So then we're going to select a reference shape and we're going to say select this and we're going to say use selected. Um, and then we are going to enable our chain replicate again. Why isn't this working properly? Oh, I did the wrong one. That's my fault. So let's turn it on here. There we go. Okay. Let's turn this one off of here. We don't want to chain replicate on that one. Okay. That was just because I duplicated it again after it, um, after I had applied the chain replicate. Anyway, so we can take this, we can move this around, and it will just replicate the the replicate the object and replicate the relation between the two objects. So this is super useful if you want to make a if you want to make a chain and you know wrap it around or have it have some natural kind of twisty motion to it. 
um, get very sort of natural, organic, complex shapes, we can go ahead and uh, up the chain length here, see what happens over time. Um, you, can mo you can modify the original shape, but it's best to select the target shape here and, and play around with that. Um, anyway, you can get some unexpected and very uh, interesting sort of organic feeling shapes with this. Uh, it's a really fun, really fun one to play around with. Again, this is great for all sorts of things like stairs or other sort of repeating objects over time. Um, one interesting thing that this does under the hood is it enables a new feature we have in the object properties here, which is always draw on top. So this shape that we're using as a reference shape is always drawing on top of the other shape, but you can you can toggle this on and off for any shape you like in the scene now if you want it to always be seen, um, always draw on top of other objects and always be selectable on top of other objects. Otherwise it would be hard to select the reference shape and move it around because there's another shape that's exactly the same that's the, the, first, the first duplicate in the chain replicate. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, those are the main new features. We've also added a bunch of, um, of small updates that people have requested. Um, things like being able to zoom based on the mouse uh, position, which we didn't have before. That's an option. Um, also, uh, UV export, you can now uh, change the line width that happens when you export the UV image to, to paint on top of it in another program and a few other small things like that, which you can check out in the release details. But that's it for this release. It's a pretty big one, um, Silo 2024.3. 20, um, you can download a free trial at nevercenter.com slash silo and, and find out more information there. So thanks for watching.